Hi everyone, welcome to the Kiali and Jagger demo. We are finishing the Sprint 34 and today we are presenting uh, several features from our team. So first we talk uh, Jay, next we talk Alberto, and finally uh, Pavel. Okay, Jay, the mic, the stage is yours. All right, thanks, Lucas. I will just share out my screen. Hang on one moment. And Lucas, can you just tell me when you see my screen? Yes, I can. All right, thanks. Okay, so this is going to be the Saturn team uh, Sprint 34 demo. I'm going to try to do it a little bit like a contrived script to show the features that we have added uh, in this sprint. So. Let's pretend I am a dev, I'm working on book info, and I've gone to the app, and I'm noticing that I'm seeing an error in the app, and my rating service, for some reason, is not working. Um, so let's investigate. I'm going to start by going over to the OpenShift console and take a look at whether or not my cluster in general is healthy, uh, and it seems to be fine so let me go to the project view and this is openshift 4.2 um, i can go to the projects look at book info itself again it seems okay i could drill down i could drill down and it wants to take its time because it's a demo there it goes and I wanted to note that although everything looks good here, um, the next thing I want to do is I want to probably go to the actual service mesh and check out my app in, in Kiali. And now uh, up here in the Red Hat apps, we have a new feature um, that's starting to show um, interaction between uh, the OpenShift and Kiali. I've got a link here where I can go to Kiali. I wanted to mention that in 4.3 of um, OpenShift, there would be another link here at the bottom of the project page, which would link to Kiali and focus immediately on that particular project or, or namespace. But that's I'm not here right now because I'm in 4.2. But this one's here up here in the um, top level. So let me click on that. And you can see it brings me to Kiali. I'm bypassing login. Um, I just have uh, the anonymous login for the demo purposes, but normally it would bring you to a login screen. And I can see that the Book Info app is in fact got some does in fact have some issues. Let's um, take a look at the applications itself. And one feature I wanted to mention uh, that we worked on are improvements to the health cards that we pop up. Uh, we've done a UX review there and change them around to hopefully be more clear um, and easier to to process when you do the hover over them and i can see of course that the reviews does have issues going on so let's continue to figure out what's going on by looking at the graph view and i can immediately see that there's problems uh, just looking at the traffic but before we look at that, I wanted to mention uh, another thing we've done in Sprint 34, which is a, a UX review and, and thorough uh, revision of the side panels in the graph, where we've tried to clean things up. We're using a lot of resource badging now. We have used a consistent font. We've thinned out the charts. In general, trying to give a lot more information uh, in or at least the same information, if, if not more, uh, in a more reasonably laid out way that requires less scrolling. And that goes throughout all of the different um, side panels. So if you've got the application box side panel, you can see we've also added here uh, a kebab menu for context, which will allow you to navigate directly to um, other views in Kiali if you want to do that. I will say that those options are mirrored here in the context menu, so you're getting the same thing over here in the side panel if you want. If you're focused over here, you can you can jump from there. 
Um, we've improved the ability to see the health um, by badging that as well. And again, a lot more uh, clarity with using the resource badging and a much thinned and easier to, uh, to process, hopefully, view there. So let me getting another little blip in performance. There it's back. That is a connection to AWS for some reason. It's a bit slow um, today at times. So I just wanted to show, um, again, now we want to investigate this, the issue that we're seeing. We can tell that there are problems going to this external service entry. I can see probably that the problem is that I'm, I'm requesting a host that is not particularly valid, so that's probably my, my issue. But let's say I want to find out when this actually started. Um, one big feature that we've got in Sprint 34 is the introduction of graph replay. And this is kind of um, at the beginning of a bunch of features that I think will be coming, which all have to do with the, the ability to focus on custom time ranges um, and to look into the past to investigate your information. But you'll, you'll note this new icon on the graph toolbar, and it just says replay. If I click that, I'm brought to a brand new replay toolbar and replay view. And what that gives you is the ability to go back in time and replay parts of, uh, of your graph. So if you have something you want to investigate, instead of having to just roll forward and once it's shown um, for the current time frame, it's lost, we can now go back. And what you're presented with is the ability to have a few um, predefined replay in, uh, windows, like I want to replay the last minute, I want to replay the last five minutes, which is the default, and so forth. Or you can set your own custom start time. And let's just say I happen to know that that deployment of that service entry was a little bit earlier today, somewhere around 8.30. So I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to say, all right, let's replay for five minutes from 8.25 and see if we can see when that actually took place. You can see that my um, progress bar is set to 8.25, and I can just start playing. And now I've gone back in time. You can see here that we're badged into replay mode. You put this bar here to kind of indicate that you're not really in real time, but you're replaying. And you can see the time frame in the past. Um, and I believe I'm again getting, yep, sorry, there's another AWS blip. It jumped several frames. That's typically not the case. Hopefully it will go more smoothly. Okay, now you can see that it's moving forward. Um, you can adjust the speed. And I'm just going to go to fast until I can find the point where I introduced that service entry. Oh, and there it is. Well, I can pause at any point, and I can actually back up. And I could potentially, oh, there's the change. And I could play it again from here. I can investigate what was happening at that time, you know, what else maybe happened um, during that deployment and so forth. I'm not going to go any further, but that's, the, that's your basic idea, right? So you're, you're able to now go back in time. And uh, again, this is going to be, I think, a bunch of powerful features going forward around um, correlating information in the past, investigating times of interest, and so forth. And you can close your replay, of course and go back to real time. I wanted to also mention that a lot of the work that was done in Saturn in Sprint 34 was actually about the operator um, authorization work, install work. In fact, over half the PRs that were merged in this Sprint were in that arena. Um, so although we don't really show that, 
it's important to uh, to give credit to uh, Maz and the other folks that were doing work on the operator and continue to do so. That is the Saturn update. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Jay, for the updates. Uh, next one, Alberto. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so today I am going to talk about the new trace integration. Uh, Keality has removed the A-frame in order to improve the integration with tracing and, and the user experience. Uh, Keality has three cases of configurations. The first one is uh, that Keality doesn't show the standard link distributed tracing or the traces integration when the URL or in cluster URL configuration are not set. The second one is that Keality shows this external link that we are seeing in the main menu. Uh, in the same detail, the traces tab uh, will be another link to the external tracing tool. Uh, this we can see it when the URL setting in configuration is set. And the last one, uh, Kiali shows the tracing integration in the tracing tab instead of the link that I commented before when the in cluster URL configuration is set. So uh, when we go to the service details, we can see that Kiali shows an error icon. Uh, it detects error in the traces in the space of time that the user selected in the traffic one here in the top down. So if we go to the tracing tab, we can see only the error traces. This is why we have enabled this button. So if we, if we want to see all the traces, we need to click again. In that case, we are showing only the last 20 traces, or we are going to date this to 100 to see more traces. And we are going to enable the reference. Okay, by default, uh, Kiali saw the last 20 traces of the last uh, 10 minutes of traffic that the user selected. Uh, with the adjust time, uh, we can uncheck it this to expand the traces between the time given in the results, because if not, we are going to see the 20 minutes traffic that the user selected in the scatter plot. So uh, each data point represented a distributed trace. And uh, yeah, we can filter with this button, like I said, or with the legend options. We can select here to see only the correct traces or the error uh, traces and the all the traces. Well, we have some filters here, the interval trace. In the interval trace, we can filter by the trace by duration. So we can here, for example, in, in this case, all the relations are between zero or five, but um, think for example, if we have some uh, trace with 20 of duration, we can select only uh, at this interval to show only the traces with more duration. This is some filter. And the options are calculated automatically, in intervals of two, five, or 10 milliseconds or microseconds, depending on based on the, on the results. Uh, the limit one, the status code uh, filter to, to the traces by some normal status code that we think is, they are more useful for the user. And yeah, this is a link to the Yage UI tracing tool if the user has the URL configuration set. So when we click Mm, in the scatter flow some trace, for example, this one, we can see all the information related with this with this trace. Uh, Kiali shows again another link to the is this specific, this specific trace, the duration, the date, the num the name of the trace, the identifier, the number of spans, how many errors of them, and all the spans grouped by operation name. Uh, in this case, Kiali represents in black when the operation name is the same as the service. In this case, we are in the product page, so we have in black the product page. And with this view, users can easily see which is the span with error. In this case, we have the span 
in the operation name product page. So when the user click in this operation name, he can check all the information about the spans. And once again, we can see that the error span is this one. For each span, we have some links, for example, to go to the service product page, the duration, to view the metrics of this service, or in this case, view the logs of the workload where the span has been generated. In this case, it's the product page version one, because we are checking the tags of the of each span for get this, this workload. So if we click in a span, we can see all the information about the tags. And yeah, that's all from my side. Thank you, Alberto. Next demo. Uh, finally, to finish the demo, I guess that Power from the Jagger team is also to present uh, new features. Pavel, the stage is yours. Okay, hi, I will just share my screen. I will do actually two things. I will do short presentations so you better understand uh, the whole concept, and then I will show you a short demo. I assume you can see my screen, so I will jump to presentation. Uh, so kind of, yeah. new, kind of new effort what we want to do in Jaeger. Uh, we want to create a data analytics platform and integrate it with Jaeger. Uh, so the main goal is basically provide the platforms where uh, users could verify their hypothesis about the system, but also we want to you know, leverage the tracing data and derive other metrics and features from traces. So before we start, I would just to I would just to I would like to talk about you know difference between monitoring and observability because I think they these two terms they don't mean the same and there is you know slight difference and there's a lot of you know uh, interesting conversation on the internet trying to compare these two terms and the one I like uh, is basically saying that observability is something which requires a human operator uh you know actions so it's something when you proactively ask questions uh about the system behavior so in other words it's something you know like debugging but not debugging in a traditional debugger but debugging uh, by using telemetry data on the other hand monitoring is something what can work fully autonomously without any human interaction and my point here is that you know, distributed tracing is mostly used for root cause analysis or incident analysis. And when you do this kind of analysis, you often ask system very complicated questions, what happened? So it makes a lot of sense to provide the capability or APIs as part of distributed tracing system where users can, you know, verify their hypothesis or questions what they have about the, the behavior. So as I mentioned, our goal is basically to do two things. Uh, as a standard part of deployment, uh, derive the interesting insights from traces what we collect. So this will you know, run on all of the data what we collect and derive any new uh, you know, metrics or uh, any new data structures uh, which can be then presented to users and it will uh, help them to understand their systems. And the second part is provide kind of like on-demand uh, capability where users can uh, write, for example, very simplified code, verify uh, whether a certain you know, action happened in the system or just verify their hypothesis uh, by using telemetry data, and most importantly, traces. So how do we approach this problem in Jaeger? Uh, you know, so if you want to derive features from tracing data, we have to have access to the data, right? And once we have the data, uh, we probably want to apply some kind of filtering because if you want to extract a specific feature, uh, that feature only applies probably to a subset of the data would we collect. 
And then once you have the, the data you are interested in, then you can apply feature extraction or basically run the machine learning model. And so once you have the results, you just have to store them somewhere. So from the technological perspective, to get the data, uh, we can already connect to our existing uh, Kafka instance in streaming strategy, and then just use framework like Spark Streaming to get data in like timed windows, and then aggregate them to get the traces and run the analysis on them. To get the historical data, we can you know query the data from our query service. The interesting part uh, happens now with the filtering and feature extraction. So we want to be we want to provide very simple way how you know DevOps people or any operators could write any like could manipulate with traces, extract data from them, uh, and ver verify whether you know some action happened in a system. So to do that, we uh, we built a library. It's called Trace DSL. It's basically a graph. It's basically a graph API with trace specific uh, functionality. I will talk about that in a minute. And then once we have the results, uh, we have to store them somewhere. Uh, you know, if you derive a lot of the derived features from traces will be basically metrics so we can just export them as a Prometheus metrics. And so at the moment we do only metrics. We don't run any other machine learning models which would produce, uh, you know, a different data structures. So let's have a look at the architecture. So this is the streaming Jaeger architecture. On the left side, we see the host there on container emitting the data to Jaeger collector, and then it goes to Kafka, and then finally it reaches the storage. Uh, so what we did from the data analytics perspective, we just connect to the same Kafka instance, get the data from there, uh, you know, from multiple services. Uh, then we have to aggregate them. So, for example, like every 20 minutes or every you know 30 minutes, we get all the data, all the spans uh, from all the, the services. We aggregate them to traces, and then we run the analysis on them. And the results go to Prometheus or the storage. For the on-demand analysis, uh, you can spin up Jupyter Notebook, write your hypothesis there, uh, get the result, and you know just present that in a in a Jupyter itself because it's a it's a web UI or store them back to the storage or or Prometheus metrics. Okay, so let's have a look at the Spark streaming uh, with Trace DSL. So I have deployed Jaeger with streaming strategy on the OpenShift 4, uh, and this is just my local IDE uh, with the project I'm going to show you. Uh, so Spark, it's basically, uh, this is basically just main class where I initialize Spark with a connector to Kafka. And then the funny part ha happens here. I get all the messages within a specific time window. You know, those messages, there are like uh, spans, those are spans from different services. And then I aggregate them based on the trace ID. So I get the full trace. Once I have the trace, uh, I construct a graph, and then I run the analysis on the graph itself. So graph, so we we use graph API from Kremlin. It's a part of the Apache Tinker project. Uh, we chose Gremlin because in Gremlin you can actually extend the core Gremlin API to add uh, new methods uh, for your domain. So build basically a domain specific language. Uh, for the models, what we run at the moment, uh, there are a couple of metrics what we derive. Uh, so first one is, for example, trace depth. I think it's better to call it uh, trace height because it's basically calculating the height of the tree, height of the trace. The second one is a service depth or service height, uh, which is basically like the number of 
network hops from the root operation to the leaf operations. So very similar to the trace depth, but uh, just we are calculating only the network hops, not the operation within a service. And the next is uh, is a network latency. Network latency between two hosts. So for example, if you have a client calling a server, we are able to calculate latency between those two hosts or services uh, and show you the latency. The difference to metric system is that uh, we split this metric by two labels. So, you know, the, the, the client and the server. So you get exactly the latency between two hosts. I'm not sure if you can get the same results from any other metric systems. And then two last metrics, uh, it's called trace quality metrics. Uh, and we basically measure the quality of the instrumentation because, you know, rolling out a tracing infrastructure in an organization is very, it's very hard because you have to instrument all of the, your services. And usually that's where, you know, the problems happen. So it's, it's a fundamental to measure how well is your whole ecosystem or infrastructure instrumented. Okay, so let's have a look at some calculations. So for example, the first one, the trace depth, uh, just uh, there's some metric definition, but interesting part is here. Uh, so we get the graph and then we basically create the traversal, which is a query. And then, and then we use, uh, well, this is actually quite a complicated one, uh, which shows, which is, which uses only the Grenon API. Uh, so for example, we repeat from, you know, uh, we repeat throughout the incoming edges, and then we get basically the longest path between the root, uh, and the, and the leave service, and then we just return the result. Maybe this wasn't the best example. Uh, show you the DSL, maybe this one. So this is the service depth. Uh, so to calculate the service depth, what we do actually, we get uh, to the leaf spans. So again, leaf spans is a, is a method from trace DSL. It's not the method from the core Glenn API. If I jump in, uh, you will see it it's uses um, actually more complicated. You cannot jump in because it's a generated class, but it basically uh, leaf spans in a gremlin means that you are looking for vertices which doesn't have any uh, outgoing edges. So let's let's go just back. So we get the leaf spans and then we just uh, you know go from the leaves to the root uh, and we just compare the, the services and if the services doesn't match, we know there was a service, there was a network uh, hop and we just increase the value. And then at the end, we return the, the maximum value, what we calculated. So let's have a look at, uh, at, the, at the results. So I'm running the Jaeger on, uh, on OpenShift and I also running the Hodrot application, which is the demo application which comes with, uh, with Jaeger. Uh, so I just generate some data and then, you know, this local Spark instance running in my IDE uh, is exposing the Prometheus uh, endpoint, Prometheus metrics. So for example, the network latency, I'm able to see, you know, the latency between two services. So for example, in this case, it's a client, is a front end uh, and server is a driver. As I mentioned before, this is the, for the services, but they also, they're also able to calculate the latency between two hosts. Because, you know, service can be load balanced between uh, multiple, uh, multiple pods or multiple nodes running uh, the same service. Uh, and then we have, for example, the this trace quality. It has the trace depth, uh, so we see, you know, the the maximum uh, height of a trace is three in this case. 
and the service depth is maximum two. So you know there are two network hops uh, in this application, maximum two network hops. Then for the the trace quality, it's actually we calculate the quality per service. So what you want to do, you want to show uh, what is the quality per service, and then kind of like aggregate the results and uh, show some kind of KPI uh, with this a single value which defines how well basically is your application instrument. Uh, so my idea is to basically uh, build a Grafana dashboard and then use Prometheus query language uh, to get multiple request to get multiple metrics and calculate a single a single value. So this is just a simple example for one one metric. So it calculates it's either one or you know between zero and one. Okay, the last part is the Jupyter notebook, the on-demand analysis. Uh, so idea might be, for example, you are you know querying services uh, in Jaeger, uh, and and for example, when you open Okay, I'm not connected. One will work. So, for example, when you open a trace and it's very large, uh, it makes it it's very hard to analyze it by uh, by just looking at it. So, my idea is that there will be some somewhere button you would click, we would click on it, and then you will jump to Jupyter Notebook, uh, where you can basically uh, define you know the trace. Trace ID or they will be they will be automatically linked, and then uh, you will just write uh, you know the, the you will use the trace DSL uh, to verify your hypothesis whether a uh, certain condition happened in the system. For example, in this case, uh, we are asking a question whether two pens or operations are somehow connected, uh, so one is parent of the other one. Uh, so again, trace DSL. I'm using the has name, which is a method from uh, from the trace DSL, and then I'm using some Gremlin API, uh, and then again the the trace DSL method. In my experience, it's uh, writing Gremlin queries is not the easiest easiest thing to do. So it makes a lot of sense to to build a strong library, uh, which will simplify, you know, the the, uh, the feature extraction for trace data. Okay, this is everything that I have prepared. Thank and you. I would like to also mention that this is kind of like still new effort, and we are looking for any feedback or feature requests. So just you know, go to the repo and um, you can create an issue, or just talk to us. Thank you a lot, Paul. This, this feature is impressive, and one first preliminary feedback that I have is how we can also put together this uh, analytics inside of Kiali with because I guess it makes all sense. That's because probably this if it, um, this analytics can help to spot the user where they have to look to to understand, investigate. But yeah, it's very nice. So thank you a lot. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I just want to mention that the like, idea is that we, as, as part of Jaeger deployment, will you know calculate new metrics and new uh, new insights about the deployment, and then the Kiali would consume that and show it in a in a nice UI or something like that. There are more use cases. Like there are more. There's there is a lot of things what we can do. So for example, what I was thinking as a next step. Uh, what I have long time in my head is something like uh, priority queue for errors. So once we get the error in a trace, oh, we will store it in a in a priority queue, and then ju just count the the occurrences. Uh, and then the Kiali could, for example, just get the first one, which uh, is the error which is most time happening in your system.
Yeah, completely makes sense. Okay, so I guess that's all. We are six minutes of the hour, so I would like to thank you all the presenters, great demo, and I invite to everyone to attend uh, three weeks where we, we are going to start Spring 35 tomorrow, uh, up to three weeks, where we will prepare um, a new demo of what we're working out. So, thank you everyone. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.